all stand to your feet. We're gonna give a round of applause to our good brother who y'all came here to see, General Sara. <laughs> But today, this lecture was a lecture that I started on the last time I was here. And for some reason, I left my core to the computer. It's been developed since then, but what I put out was the making of a nigga. This was the second half, and it would have been almost three hours anyway. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm returning to give you the greatness. I showed you where we came from in the making of a nigga. Uh, the word itself, you know, causes people to have all type of opinions. You know, some people don't want to use the word. That's okay. You ain't got to use it. It still ain't going nowhere. So you can deal with that, okay? It's not going nowhere. It's going to be niggas here 2,000 years from now saying nigga. And, uh... What I, during the research, I found out that the pronunciation, the expression of the word has been on this planet long before the Portuguese, okay? A lot of people can't understand that because the, the filter that they use to look out into the world is the filter of the white man, okay? So if you hear, some, if you hear somebody say, nay, God, you, you automatically say, oh, that nigga just using a de, de, you know, a degener degenerative term of nigga, okay? That nigga is the first word, and that nega and any derivative thereof is just a, a de degenerative form of nigga, which is just not true, okay? And, and I know people then went to the uh, internet, did their research to find that out. But some people just got to be right. See, don't use nigga. Don't use it without even having an understanding of what it is. Okay? And so, for me, it's like it's something in us that causes us to say this word. Because ain't no cracker going to instill nothing in us. We have a totally different spirit than the white man. Period. Anything we say, he need a damn interpreter. Okay? He needs an interpreter because we speak from a different spirit. Okay? And so what we've what we got now today, and they think that, that there is no niggas, but they is, they are niggas. They niggas. Okay? They niggas. Uh let me let me let me get in here. I know already put that up. Raw truth on display. You might hear a cuss word. Okay? I don't want you to lose your mind. Like, you know, uncles and aunties and mamas and daddies ain't cussing at home. That's shameful. That's shameful, man, what people are doing say, okay? You know, got, got mamas and daddies at home using niggas all other kind of words. And then come right out here and jump on side rock right soon set. But they won't go home and jump on mama. Won't do that. Look out. I'm looking in your eye. I'm looking in your eye. I know what's going on. What we going to be dealing with, let me... Give shout out to the grandmasters that put me on this path. Uh, the high chancellor, Chancellor Williams, who wrote the dis destruction of black civilization, a classic. You got that back there? You better, if you ain't got it, get it. It's a classic. Okay, take your time. You ain't gonna read it in a week. It's a lifelong book. You will be reading it for the, the rest of your life. You can go in there and see how the cracker then took your history from you. Dr. Joseph Ben Yakanan, who is the father of all forms of Nile Valley teachings and research. Okay? If you got an arc, if you if you got a comedic name, okay, I know y'all might think it comes from one of the other guys, but it's just not so. Okay? 
It was, if it was not for Dr. Ben, it would be nobody in America dealing with Egypt. Get your facts together, okay? Did over 60 years of physical research. I'm not talking about no book learn niggas, okay? We're talking about the man that was in the field digging down in the soil. That's the grand master of the craft of Amon Ra that brought that to the Western Hemisphere. Then we're going to deal with Baba John Henry Clark, one of the greatest that ever did, okay? Who consciousness about African, not too many people have a mind with that much information in it. Dr. Clark is a white, a walking encyclopedia. And then you got Shape the Great D.I., okay? And Shape was also a scientist that went down in the ground, dug, dug up some of the bodies, did research on it to show that in the melanin, the melanin content in the mummy showed that they was not Europeans. It was high content. Shut him down. Then you got John the G. Jackson. If you ain't got none of them books, you better get it. And John the G. Jackson, he was one of the older ones. He came before Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, and Chancellor Williams, and Sheikh D.I. He's the one, if you're dealing with Massey, I see Massey back there. Church work. These is all these white boys that was writing about Egypt in the early 1900s. John G. Jackson is one of the ones that brought that up. And then you, you got niggas that'll quote Gerald Massey, quote Church Word, won't even call John G. Jackson name up. See? And then you know, this, when you look at that Zygos movie, that's all that that cracker did was go in them books, get the references, put the shit on the damn video, and all these niggas wanted Zygos. You got Zygos? Hell no. I'm not going to put no cracker on my, my list. You niggas will sell crack. I don't do that. And so this is what you're seeing right now. You know, the cracker was a beast. Came in, stole our history, plotted on us. You understand what I'm saying? Carved all, they carving all of the carvings off the wall right now, repainting them. I got pictures where they repaint them because they know that our, the power of our spirit is in the writings. See? But y'all niggas, hey, I'm going to get on you, I'm going to get on your religions today. Now, if you can't take that, you might as well get on up out of here now, because I'm going to spare none of them at all. So you ain't got to think it's a personal shot. <laughs> I don't treat none of them, because they all a bunch of crooks. Okay? They done been, we, you looking at Detroit, they talking about Detroit so bad. I mean, goddamn, I mean, you've been giving your money to the church for the last 30 years, the other little pennies. Go to the A-Rap, okay? We can't no longer not practice black power. See? We can, if the time is up where you're not, if you're not practicing black power, you the enemy. That's all I could consider you. Nigga, there ain't, there ain't no more time for you to figure it out. If you ain't practicing black power, you the enemy. And we're going to have to start sweeping these niggas up off of the streets. It's, it's about black power gangsterism. We ain't got to stop being gangsters. I know y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all ready for a nigga to clean up, put a suit on, this, that, and the third, which is not going to happen. And I don't know why y'all ain't figured that out by now. But many of us still thinking niggas is going to all of a sudden just be a, 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 a dark-skinned cracker. Put the suit on, go to a college. College is over with. You can go get all the goddamn degrees you want, stack them up, and your ass still going to be down there at the Burger King. Okay? There's a lot of niggas got all type of degrees, and then spend them a hundred thousand dollars to get the damn degree, and then can't even get a job at any local little business. Okay, and so I go hard because I know the state of what my people's in. I ain't got time for you niggas trying to, you know, go the long route. You understand what I'm saying? This is do or die for our people. Okay, this generation must turn this shit around. Okay, we can't take another a generation like this, okay? So that's the seriousness of what I'm trying to bring to my people. You know, the old ways have, have passed. When you, we, we'll try, but after so long, you got, if you don't render no damn results, we got to get rid of that shit. The white man, he, if, if he hire you as a CEO, he judge you every three, four months. How you doing? You ain't performing for his business, your ass is out of here. Y'all been waiting on Jesus for 2,000 years. We've been getting our ass whooped. Ain't got here yet. But wait a minute. 
It's a part of y'all religion to wait. But I tell you what, don't let them crackers put that money on your EBT card. You'll call them at, them crackers quick, fast, and hurry. My money ain't no here. So what does that mean? Certain shit you won't wait for. Huh? But y'all been waiting on this Jesus to come save y'all ass for 2,000 years. He ain't got here yet, and y'all mad at me for telling you that he just ain't coming. <laughs> y'all been waiting on the nigga going to a party, and you know, you know about what time to say. Nigga ain't coming. You see what I'm saying? Party down there over with. <laughs> nigga ain't coming. See, you won't come to that realization. So we know it's about two, three grains of sand left in the hourglass. It's going to be niggas come here and tell you about Seti, talking about niggas. You know, he say nigga this, that, and third. When it's two, three grains of sand left in the hour, hourglass, as a leader, you must prioritize what, must need, what needs to be at the top of what we should be doing to save our race. And if I ask any leader in 2013, what is the top three things we need to be doing in our communities to save our race? If a nigga tell me not saying nigga, you might, you might as well run from him. Because that ain't going to do shit. You got niggas out here speaking better English than the queen. And the nigga can't get a job. They turn their back on that nigga just as a nigga that talk like I talk. Okay? So that don't mean nothing. You can talk all the good language you want. It don't mean nothing. The reality is, we in a war. Now, we here to fight these two very serious di diseases, niggeritis and krakatosis. You see? And they wiping out niggas all over the planet Earth. Look at this. You see, look in his face. He's sick, eyeballs about to pop out his skull, neck skinny. You see what I'm saying? But he still followed the way. He don't know no other way. He can't think out of the box. You don't understand what religion is. You don't understand what God is. Religion is man-made. Ain't nobody was ever born into the world with a book tied to their ass. Okay? So you was not born with a religion. You got that when you got here. Okay? If God wanted to give you a religion, at birth would, would have been the best time to give it to you. What you was born with is an innate spirituality. You ain't got to come here to find God because you wouldn't have got here if it wasn't for God, okay? This is the thing. We, you think that you're not connected, but that's the confusion of religion to talk you out of that. And so when you accept that book, that's just like when, when you accept that book, that's just like the genie in the lamp. The only thing is your spirit is trapped in that book just like the genie is trapped in the lamp. And so you can look at these niggas and you wonder why they running around the streets the way that they do. You see what I'm saying? Sick. See? And then we, we talk about the niggas. But we don't talk about the crackers that then put this program down. These niggas didn't just turn out like that. Generations didn't miss their mark. And you understand that I, I get on the elders for talking about these youth like that. Because they would not have got like that if it wasn't for their mama and their daddy. So don't get on these goddamn babies without getting on the generation that preceded them. All right. That's all I hear. All these young niggas are doing. Why? Why? Because y'all not doing shit. You don't want to pr practice black power. You don't want to do. What does that mean? Black first on everything. Black second and goddamn third. I don't want to see no goddamn cracker. For nothing. I'm not feeding you. I'm not putting a stitch on your goddamn back. Even if I had it. I'll put it in the goddamn closet. And keep it here for another time. I wouldn't give them shit. But we got good people who practice in all these good religions, and they, they love, and, they, and this, that, and the God is love, give, and peace, and ain't nobody giving you shit. Every goddamn community I went across this United States, niggas is starving. 2013, there's a few doing all right, but the, rest, the majority is in a state of despair. Okay, and so we got to come up with an answer quick. And the only, we must go back to Marcus Garvey. You must. He didn't already figure that out. You got to go back to Colin. You got to go back to Malcolm. You got to update it because you're further in the goddamn hole. You don't want to practice it. You wait till niggas is damn there in the casket.
dare you want to throw your fist up in the air. And like I say to everybody, most of these niggas, they'll sit in here and say, black power! Go right out the door and do white power. <laughs> Quick. Go right back into society. So we, you got to wean yourself off of whitey. Some of this shit that you ain't got to, if you don't necessarily need it to, to live day to day, you got to start weaning yourself off of some of this shit you buy out of these cracker stores. Okay, I know we need certain things, but we have to learn to wean ourselves off of this cracker. Because if you don't, you're going to think you always need him. You're, and that's what's wrong with most people. They don't, they, they don't believe, if they, if they leave the cracker, they believe they won't get no toilet paper, no toothpaste, no food, no blunts, no cigarettes, no liquor. See, that's all coming. All the shit they need come from the cracker. See, they ain't never seen a nigga do nothing, no, get no stalls or nothing like that. So if they stop and practice black power, shit, they ain't going to even be able to roll a blind up. That's what they believe. They don't believe they can live without the white man. And that's a sickness that's been put down in our mind. And we, and we are never going to be free until we get off of the dependency of, of thinking white people got to give us everything. That's bullshit. They waging war with our people. It's war. Shot the young brother Trayvon Martin down. What the hell y'all waiting on the goddamn the, the man that shot him is the man in the, at the courthouse. It kind of, that ain't no goddamn justice. Y'all waiting on the peck of wood? I hope that they locked the peck of wood up. I really hope they let him out so a nigga could kill him. <laughs> For real. Either which way it go. You see what I'm saying? If, it, if, if the cracker get off, nigga should walk right up and blow his motherfucking brains out anywhere that we see. Point blank. You got niggas that'll do it. You got niggas that'll do it. Pay the goddamn price! You niggas ain't gonna do shit. And when I'm talking, I'm talking to the world. So don't take it personal. And so you got this bullshit ass murder music out here. And all these young niggas, that's what they look like. And if they ass ain't in the grave, they on their way to the grave. Okay? You're on your way to the grave thinking you're going to be some Nino Brown. That shit is over. I done seen so many niggas wiped out in Detroit. See, the thing is about Detroit. See, more so than any other city. Yeah, you hear about other cities murdering this, that, and the third, but the, just the, the total destruction of property, this, this, that, and the third across the, the board, it look like some shit over in Arabia. See, they done just blew the whole goddamn, a lot of, half of the city is missing. You okay? Half of the damn city is missing. And so, this is the shit that facilitated that. These niggas still rapping about dope, and the dope game is over with. Huh? Really? Uh, yeah, back in the 80s when niggas was, when it first hit, yeah, you had millionaire niggas. Yeah, because it was first jumping off. Ain't no niggas out here like that. When I was coming up, I knew dope men. We knew they was millionaires. We knew they was millionaires. These niggas was riding all through the city and shit. Every day, these niggas changed the car. Niggas got diamonds and furs dragging the flow. These niggas had. We knew they was millionaires. You don't got no niggas like that no more. And you got these niggas like Jay-Z, all the rest of these silly ass niggas. They got money. You ain't been on the street, but you're still rapping about flipping birds. This nigga Jay-Z about to put out an album. If he ain't put it out, he, I think it just dropped maybe a couple of days ago. Chip Platinum. This nigga still talking about flipping birds. And this nigga done had $400 million for the last 10 years. You gonna mean to tell me that ain't the, the, the voice of a trainer? Selling goddamn dope, nigga, you ain't even been in the streets in goddamn 20 years? Won't nobody do nothing to the nigga. And so, if, see, if we not gonna take niggas out like that, you can't ask why these babies is acting the way that they do. You ain't done nothing to stop it, okay? You ain't done nothing to stop it. And so this is white supremacy. See, stay in your goddamn mouth. Before I can even say he didn't hit you again. Bop, 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 bop. You see what I'm saying? You can't come with a goddamn lecture, just a lecture. You can't come with just a DVD. See, you got to be on top of this shit 24 hours a day, 365. See, this is what we do. 
We just come out, and then when the brother bring another lecturer, then y'all don't want to show up for that. Y'all got to be consistent in it, but not just coming out to lecture. You must be organizing. You got to have a, a, a plan of emergency in case some shit go down in St. Louis. How you going to get these women and these babies, I mean, these yes, these women and these babies up out of here, the brothers? Do you got a, a plan of emergency? You don't have it. Okay, then. There's a lot of other people that don't have it. But you need it because that's the most serious plight we in today. These crackers is very vocal. Okay, they're very vocal today. See this? This is string. This is a string crackatosis. When the cracker just wash your brain white as snow, and you got niggas that sit up in the church talking about wash my soul white as snow, this is what didn't happen. And so did you see the filter on that nigga mind? That's why when you say nay God, this, that, and the third, all you going to hear is nigga. You ain't going to even look at the historical origin of the word. I'm going to go in the metal now. And show you where it was in the medium now. Okay? And I'm going to tell you this up front. Everybody that's saying hotel, saying my act, saying why, patad, all the words came out of the same dictionary. So if you can't accept neg er, then leave all that shit alone. Don't perpetrate the fraud. But see, that's when people trying to be right, even when they wrong. Okay? And so you see these niggas in the church. <laughs> They, they, they ain't got no down on their elevator. The nigga go up and up and up and up and up and up and don't want to deal with no reality on the ground. That show every day macaroni and cheese eating ass goddamn preacher. And I don't give a goddamn whether you like it or not. You can go in every black community and it's just, I mean, and we doing bad, but... Over the last 50 years, they just said the church then took in down there. What the hell can we show for? God is the enemy. God is the enemy. All right. Who is God? Do anybody know? God. Come on down and explain this to us. See, y'all think I'm being sacrilegious. No God has ever parted the sky and validated nobody's belief over the other. All right? No God. See? And so what is God? God is you and I. God is family. That's what God is. When we, we created the, the images of deity, these was only the images of our mothers and our fathers. No goddamn God coming to say, where he at? I keep asking. Everybody say they know God. What's his name? Where he stay at? In heaven? Where's that at? You see, nobody ain't never been and came back. That's all belief. And I ain't mad at you if you believe it, but it's time to stand on the shit now. What is it producing? See, now if you believe in some shit and we continue into that, then you become a part of the enemy. You become, because you ain't got no, and then we wait. Goddamn, God love, supposed to love me. We supposed to be the children of God. Why would God want us in this condition like this. The white man God keeps him in power. Why your goddamn God always keep you in progress and you come up with an excuse where he come and just be humble and you know and, and, and you know and the have nots will, will, will come into the power. I don't want to hear that shit. We've been saying it too goddamn long. Okay. And so this is nigga writers. This is extreme nigga writers. When all you going to do is sit up in the guy. <laughs> all you going to do, look at this nigga. <laughs> and you talk about it ain't no niggas. He look like he supposed to, he supposed to be at the club some goddamn way. You see what I'm saying? What the hell you, you in church. Break dance. This nigga break dance. <laughs> see, so you see. That's, if you look, the, the third eye, we got to go into the seat of the mind. See, we got to reclaim our divinity. We got to reclaim our divinity. That's the seat of your whole consciousness. When you have, when you have your divinity intact, everything else fall into place. Your economics, your education, you see, because our peoples are divine. You're not going to let no cracker teach your baby. You're, not, you're just not going to do it. 
You're not going out there with your white people teaching nothing but what's on the curriculum. If you deviate, you're gone, okay? Anywhere else, nobody lets their enemy teach their children but niggas, okay? So don't come in here with all that trying to be clean with me. See, we Africans racially, socially, economically, culturally, we goddamn niggas. And just like the dope fiend, you got to, the nigga got to come to realize he addicted, okay? Before he can cure himself. Before you, anything, if you, you got to understand, I'm doing this. You know, some niggas is in denial. You see, I ain't no goddamn slave. All right, did you pay your rent this month, nigga? Oh, man, I'm going to get it to Galdo. I'm going to get it to Galdo. Damn there, go home, shit out on the goddamn, on the street right now. So we talking about going into the consciousness of our people and instilling back into it the black divinity that built Egypt. You can't build Egypt just talking about where we was, we God. Nigga, you riding the bus. What God you know, and this is the lingo that we use. But we, this is how you know that the black divinity is not truly there. You see what I'm saying? Because if you truly practicing black divinity, what's going on in the community? going to change. It's a given. So you can have people saying, I'm God, I'm a king, I'm a queen, and when you go right out the street, if you hover over all them niggas that say they gods and, and they kings and this, that, and that, if you just hover and look at them niggas in the midst of everybody else, you wouldn't be able to change, you know, see one nigga from the other. Period. We practicing the same thing, okay, in reality. Let me come out of that. Okay, I'm going to get past this because we, we, okay, so these are some of the books that I'm going to be using today. You got any of these books, brother? You got some of them? Okay, then. He got the wonderful Ethiopians of the ancient Kushite Empire. That's by Drusilla Dungey Houston. You need to get with that, sister. She, I mean, she put, you see that first published in 1926. And so many of the uh, teachers of today, they borrowed from that sister, Okay. She, she lay, and that's a powerful book. Even though she wrote it in 1926, they can't un overturn nothing in the book. She put it down hard the first time. And see, when I was reading the book, that's when I seen the word not. See, she dealt with it in that book. You may not have read, went into it deep enough, but she deals with it. So anybody in here, at, and she says, it's a purely African word. So anybody in here feel like they done, done more research than Drusilla Dodge in Houston, would you please stand up? What you going to refruit on? See, we got scholars. See, we just coming into this knowledge. Really, and then, you know, with you, you, Eugene Adams, he put out the uh, DVD, African, uh, Africans in Asia, and he was the first one that put it on a DVD. You see what I'm saying? So we can understand what this word is. And then from Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolph Wentz. Okay? Let me come on out of this. Now, this is the stolen legacy. What did, I'm going to summarize this. What he's speaking about is that all civilizations, their educational system, their religion, their mathematics, all of it come out of Africa. Every major civilization you see in the ancient world, whether it's Mesopotamia, whether it's India, whether it's China, whether it's Greece, whether it's Rome, they was all established by Ethiopian people. Them people that you see there today just got there, okay? Africans ruled the whole planet because before you can mutate, you got to come into the land first. We talk about all this evolution shit, and I still don't accept that no crack. I'm not, no cracker come from my people. Okay? I don't believe that. And y'all can, and if I have to show you why I believe this way, babies in here, I'm not going to do it today. Do it. I'll give you a little bit, but I'll sneak it in. I'll sneak it in. We're going to be, this is another. This is a, a, a Roman, Diodorus, no, yes he is, from Sicily, the Sicilian. And he talks about when Osiris went into India. It says Osiris being come to the borders of Ethiopia. Let me go down. But, but he built likewise many cities in India, one of which he called Nasa, willing to leave a remembrance of that in Egypt, 
where he was brought up. And this man wrote in the first century BC, he talks about the, the Africans that went into India and established the Hindu Kush. So we're not just making this up, okay, when we talk about Naga. I mean, this word is used in so many different forms, it's, it's unbelievable. Now, this is the first world right here. This is the first world, okay? This is the reason you think it's upside down, but it's not. It's top side up. See, because our people came down the river, okay? We came down the river. So Europe and, and all the uh, 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 upper Asia is on the bottom to our people. That's why when you read Egyptian history, this is lower Egypt, and up here is upper Egypt. This is lower Sudan, this is upper Sudan, because they're considering this the top, okay, when you do your research. And so our peoples was come. you got, I'm going to deal with the monsoons. You got the moms in eat and in, in, in. See, those are those wind currents. And at, at, I'm going to show you the months where it blow towards it. okay? They blowing hard, too. So you can bring large commodities during these times, and then for four or five months, they switch and go back to Africa. So our peoples was coming, this is what you call the southern hemisphere, and our peoples was coming across these oceans tens of thousands of years ago. You know, coming into Australia, coming into what you call Indonesia, coming into, you know, what they call the, uh, Polynesia and, and, and all these crazy ass words. Just to keep from calling it African people, okay? This is the this is a uh, uh, right side up for the people just can't take this way. They say, God damn it, I don't want to say that. I know what you're talking about, but in case you need to see it this way, okay? And so again, the monsoons is coming up the Mozambique Channel, and they blowing all through here what they call the Arabian Sea. And if you put any boat in it, it's going to land you right into it, automatically. And if you come low enough, it'll shoot you up under and come over here into the bay of, of being God. So I want my people to understand what a white man say, we crossed over the Barren Strait walking. We wasn't walking no damn way. Our people's been on boats for tens of thousands of years. When you go, when you go into Africa, you got all of these rivers, and you need to study them rivers. Africa got more rivers than any goddamn continent on the planet. Africa got rivers going from south to north, north to south, east to west, west to east. Africa got a lot of rivers. And so that's the way our people survived on the continent. And that's the way we're going, we're going to have to go. Those are the highways. Those are the highways. You can shoot from the Great Lakes region all the way down to the Mediterranean. Up here, you got the Great Lakes, Holy Great Lakes region. Outside of the uh, Great Lakes in Michigan, this is fresh water. Okay? I must add, that's very important. Fresh water. That means we can drink. You got criminally renamed Lake Victoria. Ain't no goddamn Lake Victoria in Africa. But if you go to a map, that's what it's going to say. It's the largest outside of Lake Superior in Michigan. This is the large, second largest freshwater lake on the planet. Then you got Lake Tanganyika, which is the volume of water in that lake is like maybe the second, uh, the third largest. And so our people, it's, it's fish in, in, in an ecosystem around these, these, these lakes that's like oceans. They got fish in these lakes that's older than the goddamn fish in the ocean. They got jellyfish and all type of fish that they had documented at the bottom of these lakes. So right there, we got something that nobody else got. We got outside of Michigan is all this fresh water. So a lot of people say Arabia, I have to get at that. Jerusalem is the holy land when geography alone will break all that down. It's no comparison. You see what I'm saying? It's no comparison. And when you look, our people started around these lakes. Why? Food, water. You can drink, you can fish, okay? There's over 500 different varieties of fish in each of these lakes. So you got fish, and then if you 
you want meat, the animal's going to come and drink. So all you have to do is go to the river. All you have to do is go to the lakes. So you get your fish, you can get your, your meat, and see, that's what's wrong with people. They think they go to Africa, they ain't going to get no chicken. They got chickens in Africa. Hey, they got any kind of goddamn meat you want. If you want your rhino burger, you can get your rhino burger. You want your giraffe burger, you can get your giraffe burger. All type of meat. See, these people never had that. See, so all that, the land of milk and the honey, prove it. Prove it. Prove it. And you can't do it. So these people created all these grand mythologies to boost up a goddamn desert. And a lot of people was traveling to Mecca, I'm all right with you. Traveling to Jerusalem, I'm all right with you. But the fact that you build up this, this grandeur of these lands as if it's greater than this giant ass continent. 13 million square miles. And I'm gonna show you the Peter projection map. Okay, to show you the correct size of these continents. This ain't even right. This is some European shit. Because they make Africa smaller than what it is. Make Europe, if, if you go to your classroom, I guarantee you, you got a pepperwood map that came out of the 1700s when they first started to moving across the waters. They did not know how to chart the lands. And so Greenland, if you watch Greenland, they're not bigger than that. Them that biggest Africa in Greenland ain't no about the smallest this. Honest God truth. And so it's called a Peter's projection map. You have to get that map so you can see the continents in their true proportion. But when our people started in this region, when they left this region, they went south before they came north. That's why you're going to find some of the hum all these humans in the world is in South Africa. And when you see that Peter projection map, to see how far South Africa is, even from Arabia, man, listen here. It's almost, it's longer than the length of the United States. You see, it's probably a, a, at least twice that. You can even look from here. And so we went south and then we came down north. So all that illusion of some goddamn Sumeria and all, see, that, that didn't happen to we. Come, I mean, we all we coming, we coming back down. See, we coming back down. But we, we came down the river first, and then we came up. And then once we mastered the Red Sea and these areas, then we began to come around into these areas. And so, what little civilization that did start in Mesopotamia, it started right down here, right off that Gulf. That's why people sailed there. It did not start down here, so no European can claim the origin of, of none of these civilizations. If you do your geography, you will see what's the oldest civilization in Europe? Come on now. What's that? All right, Greece. But what, what particular part of Greece? No, Crete. The Minoan civilization. On the island. On the islands. Right there. Crete. Okay, so what, what, what is the significance? You can see as it's coming down the river, once it goes into the Mediterranean, it goes into the islands first. You see it. It didn't start on the mainland. Do your research. The Minoan civilization. And then they begin to come over into India. You understand? And then sail into these regions of the world. These are the monsoon, the winds in July. Okay, and it's showing you the winds that's blowing all through here, okay? And so these Africans was coming over here a long time ago, family. These, we talking about the white, I mean, we talking about 10,000 years before the white man even showed up. We was all the way, so this was Kush. So when you hear Nagar, which this is not the land, but I'm going to show you where it's all throughout the culture, okay? And this is, again, this is the Hindu Kush, but this is Sumeria. Who stuck in the Bible? Who, who stars Mesopotamia? It's right there. Go and give you a hand. Nimrod. Nimrod started Mesopotamia. Who was his father? Ethiopia. Cush. That was his father, Cush. That was his father, was Cush. When you go into the genealogy, Genesis 10, write that down, will give you the genealogy 
of the hermetics in the Bible. I don't trust it worth of nothing, but it do show you that Nimrod was the son of Ethiopia. And I'm going to tell you, that's why most of the religions that come out of that so-called Abrahamic tradition, they vilify Nimrod, evil Nimrod. That's all they say about it, evil Nimrod, because it places the Ethiopian in this region before Abraham. Okay? And then going off to what I call Tamerica. Okay? My slip, I don't want to call out the Pepperwood terms. And even, see, even when you can see the world, you can, it didn't take much to put that word together. All I added was the T. Tamerica. I mean, these words been off into the, the, uh, the atmosphere long before the Pepperwood. Okay, and showing you the, the Congo base. This is what the Egyptians call the tide metal root, land of the God. So not only do you got the fresh water right there, you see this river, this is the Congo, you got the Nile over here, and then you got all of this tropical region. This is where the world's oxygen comes from, out of the rainforest. And so Africa, Africa's uh, rainforest is the sec second largest behind the Amazon rainforest. Okay? But see, the Amazon don't got, the America don't have this, South America don't have that water. And they don't have all of these, and so this is coming from the, from the east of Africa to the west of Africa. And then you got the Nile shooting from the, the inner Africa, southern Africa, down to northern Africa. Okay? And so no other continent has these type of resources now. I'm not even dealing with what's in the ground. So this is the holy land. And when you just go straight to resources, resources alone will refute most of religion. They'll talk about it's a better land than Africa. There is no better land than Africa. That's where all people, I don't give a goddamn about nobody talking about no Lumeria, no Atlantis, no goddamn Sumeria, none of that. It cannot compare. If you look right now today, if you if you if you ask any of these world powers what got their land they would take first, and I guarantee you it'll be Africa. I guarantee you. They won't take Mecca. They ain't gonna take Jerusalem. They don't want it now. They don't want it. What's over there? You can't drink no goddamn oil, okay? You can't drink no god, you can't eat no goddamn sand, okay? All right. So you're seeing here the, the rivers in the ocean. See, and see how they even, it, you see how the Africans even came. This right here, Mexico, is the oldest civilization in this part of the world. The old Mex. Okay? And you can see right here that the, the river currents in the ocean come right up into the, the Gulf of Mexico. And this is where the oldest of any type of architecture, writing, the Omec. And they call it the Mayan calendar. The Mayan never had nothing to do with that goddamn calendar. Okay? That's so, I mean, this is trivial research that we could do. When you look at the Mayan, if you just look the Mayan up, they say a people that live around a little bit like 100 BC, but their grandeur came around maybe. 280. But the goddamn calendar go back to 3008 BC. They weren't even here to do the goddamn calculations. Y'all can't do that little mathematics. They weren't even here to do, but all you hear is talk about the Maya calendar. The Maya calendar. You know how long it took to create that calendar? It took thousands of years to calculate that math. The Maya wasn't even on the scene. But we always want to get a credit to some outside. Okay? And so here's the, the rainforests in the world. This is where all the oxygen, medicine, almost 75% of all natural medicines come out of the rainforest. They're your medicine. That's why Imhotep's father was Pata, the Twa. And that's where the Twa stay at. The little short, which all come, what, what the Western world call pigs. This is where they stay, most of them stay at right now today. The rainforest. They were the first one that gathered the medicine. They was there for hundreds of millions of years. This is where they were. And these were the 
the little twa and the sand people. You know them, they call them bush man. They got that real short, tight, curly hair, and they got slack eyes. And they were the first two types that went out all over the world. The Chinese with the slant eye, they come out of the bush man. Okay? And so the woolly hair types was all through this era. But when the crackers came down, they pushed them further and further and further down to where most of them now is in these islands. You see them that was in Tasmania, wiped them all out. They weren't straight head. That's one trick to our people that no other people got woolly hair. And I'm going to talk about that hair because we do a lot of damage to our hair. And so that's how you connect to the universe. That's, these are receptors. And I'm going to tell you something. Even when you go get a drug test, they take the hair sometimes because that shit stay in your hair longer than anything. Okay? Whatever you did took is in your hair. I love my sisters. This is not no, no, I ain't trying to disrespect or nothing. You cannot put no goddamn another woman hair on your goddamn head. Once you know what hair is, once you know how that shit stay in the hair, and then you wonder why you're having all these goddamn nightmares. See, I'm just being real with you. It's a fact. Just do the research. You know that. Your hair, you, I mean, you're beautiful just like you are, sister. That's the most beautiful thing you can do is be original. Shit, I don't do nothing. Shit, I just keep what I got. Oil it. You see what I'm saying? Keep it lined up. That's the best way. You see what I'm saying? When you start doing all that, you damage your receptors. You understand you need, you need to keep your hair clean, and you don't need to be putting a lot of thick shit on it. Just, you know, I mean, just, I'm saying, you cook your shit up, don't do that. You got to keep it, you know, light so the, so the creator can talk to you. You understand what I'm going through all that, that good, all right? I don't need this. Now, we also dealing with uh, the northern region of Africa. Now, this is Carthage under the great king Hannibal. Not just his father, but his, his, I mean Hannibal, but his father, Ham, Hamilcar, Hamilcar, who was his father, he was the first one that conquered what you call Spain. It wasn't no Spain. It wasn't no Spain. It wasn't no goddamn Portugal. And people talk about nigga come from Portugal. Where that now? Ain't even on the goddamn map. And y'all talking about nigga come from the Portuguese. That's not true. And so to see that our people ruled Spain before the Europeans, the Moors came in long after. They, they did exactly the same thing, and they're doing it today. If you look at Europe today, Africans and uh, Muslims and Arabs and flooded in. Then they took it over again. Then they took it over again. So you, you see even here, Sicily, that belonged to the... To the Carthaginian. Matter of fact, all of this belonged to the Carthaginian. And they were jealous of our people then. Dr. Clark talks about it. The, the damn Romans was talking about, they would wake up and they see that they Roman citizens, they say, uh, Carthage, Carthage must be destroyed. That's how they was greeting each other. Carthage must be destroyed. If the brother, if one of them crackers come up to the next one, he said, Carthage must be destroyed. You know what he said? He talk, yes, sir. Carthage must be destroyed. This is what they were talking about. It's documented. So, you know, they came down, and once they, but the brother came up here and did something that nobody ever done. He was the Michael Jordan of generals. He was doing shit that you wouldn't think nobody could do. He took elephants, African elephants, and tears, close to 50,000, 60,000 men, he came across this, this right here, this strait. At this time, they call it the Straits of Gibraltar today, named after Jabril Tariq, another Moorish black general. But he came across this strait right here, and see, Rome, they was, they was waiting on him. They had a bigger army, too. And they thought he was just going to run dead into him. He went the back way. And they didn't know he had went that way. And so they went back thinking that he had fled and he had came around and caught 
they ass slipping. And if you study it, Hannibal killed more people in one single battle than even today. That man killed about 50, 60,000 people in one battle. Look it up. Look it up. He caught their ass slipping. But after that, through treachery, some niggas, some niggas, some niggas, what they call moles. Renopos Rashidi documented it and some other books that when I was getting out of the first time. J.A. Rogers documented that Massinaceus, the king of Numidia, he was a king outside of Carthage because he wanted Hannibal's niece, okay? He wanted Hannibal's niece, beautiful woman, and somehow she ended up being given off to another general. And so he felt slighted, sided with the Romans. Sided with the Romans. Niggas, right up here, sided against our brother and, and, and closed in on him. And they came in, while he was over in Rome, they came upon our land. And so he had to return back. And over the course of a couple of battles, he, he, had, he, he lost. He lost. And they sorted the soil. They sorted the soil so that nothing could grow on it for 200 years. Okay? This is what they do to us. Okay? Let me come out of this. Now, you can see the techniques. This is that Angkor Wat, and I'm going there. And that's Angkor. Angkor. You can hear the words. You can hear them. And see, when you're looking at this type of technology, this is over thousands of years of development. You can't do this in a day. So just like if anybody in the world want to take architecture, there's only so many schools. Like a skyscraper downtown, there's only so many schools that can teach you how to build skyscrapers. It's the same with this. These people had to go to school to learn how to carve like this. There's no doubt about it. And so what schools was on the planet at that time still teaching people how to carve stone like that? And you can see right here. This ain't solid. This solid. This got splits in it. See, they can piece that together. That ain't even solid. You can see the cracks of it. That's not solid. So it's as beautiful as it is. We honor our brothers and sisters in Asia that built that, but it still can't compare to Egypt. Egypt is the greatest, our greatest performance as a people. When you want to show the greatness of Africa, you take them straight to Egypt. And you see the Grand Lodge of Top America. See, and then you go across, this is Nubia. You see the pyramids. You see the brothers here, the Nubia. Then you come here, and here you cushion. You see the pyramids here, and you see that woolly hair. That ain't that little uh, slant-eyed Chinese. Okay? He's not the original, nor that goddamn Indian. He's not the original. This is when our brothers and sisters was here. Then you come in to Sumeru, and this is a Sumeru. And you can see even in Babylonia, they have woolly hair. They did not have straight hair, family. So, listen, I want to clear this up, because there is some misconceptions that's being taught by a lot of groups. And I hate to have to come in here and get on my brothers, because it's true. You got the Nation of Islam that teach that the straight hair, we were straight hair before we was curly hair. Teach that we came into Africa and some goddamn scientists turned our hair woolly. That's a fact. And it could be, you can even come to the goddamn walls and prove that shit to be wrong. So why do they continue to teach that book? Talk about, because our hair, our, 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 you know, our eyebrows is straight, this is how our hair woolly. This is what happens when you, when you got a peck of wood as your head. You try to make a goddamn excuse for everything. And that's what it is. And then, you know, a lot of them see it now, but some of them niggas are still starch about that. Okay? All right. And then you got the old mix. You got the old mix. Okay? All unified by the pyramid. Okay? And even in West Africa. See the pyramids in West Africa? So this is what I'm talking about when we're talking about the deeper mysteries. You're not just going to come and everybody just going to come into this single. You believe that? All these people believe in pyramids, this, that. 
You see what I'm saying? That this is something that people just come up by themselves. Everybody around the world just came up by themselves. Nobody had any unity and understand. And so when you come, this is a temple in Timbuktu. Now, I didn't put the Egyptian style, but this is the Egyptian style. It's a rectangle, meaning it's long. It's oblong. You see what I'm saying? When you come down to church, it's oblong. That's why you come down, you, and then when you come all the way in, the deity will be right here. Jesus will be up on the wall. Y'all know. Y'all come in that door, and Jesus will be down here on the wall. That's oblong. Masonic lodges is like that. They all come from the Egyptian temple. But, see, they built a pyramid and combined it with the temple. Okay? Now, this is in Timbuktu. This right here is in it. That's the same damn temple. See? So there was a, a, a unified brotherhood all across this planet. And any time you see that pyramid, you know that they came up out of the Nile Valley. This is the Nubian Pyramid. This is the Hindu Pyramid. Now, this is in Lala Bella. See, this is what we're talking about schools. See, the, Af the Africans got megaliths from southern Africa to northern Africa. See, this is, this, no, no other continent has megaliths like this. See, this is proof of wisdom and knowledge. Okay? If you know more than Africa, where is your goddamn megaliths? See? And then they're going to tell you somebody came in and built it and went back. Huh? And they didn't build none of their home for their mammy and their pappy. Let me tell you something. No man puts his, his crown jewels on another man's hand. No man puts a, when you go to China, the greatest monument in China, or the Chinese people, is the Great Wall of China. It's in China. It's not in goddamn Afghanistan. It's not in Alaska. When you go to Paris, the greatest monument of, of France is the Eiffel Tower. Huh? It's not in goddamn California. Huh? It's not in Hawaii. It's in France. When you talk about the greatest monument of Britain, uh, Westminster Abbey, Big Ben, it's in the physical land of their four mothers and their four fathers. No man go put his goddamn gems on another man's hand. So why would you come into Africa, build all these megaliths, and go home and don't, don't even build a clubhouse for your mom and your dad? See, that's just science you got to use and know that. Our people's been crafted, and I got a chapter, and it, it, it's not a, a belief. It's still, it's, it's, it's shocking to see this, to see how our people, this is a mountain. They didn't lay no stone. They call this shit out. They called, this was a mountain. They called all of this shit out. And man, and the brother talked to me. You can't mess up. You can't mess up. You got to be right in a zap when you cut that stone. And they got 13 of them. Okay? Now, these is in the mountains. And the reason why these particular churches was in the mountains because our people was being ran off the lowlands. You know, the Muslims was coming in. I hate, I hate to get on them because I know my brother I love them, but these ain't you. And so I'm not attacking you because our people really believe every religion. If you go to every religion, black people is the source of it because we really believe in God. So I'm not knocking that. But these men and shit over here ain't you, okay? So don't go to taking up on them because I know what the shit is. And so they ran, the Muslims ran our Ethan. Ethiopian people off the lowland. And when you look at the first churches, they built like fortifications. Battle. They all enclosed into the goddamn mountain. And they got reservoirs up there in case they get locked in that they could collect the damn water and still drink. They got one uh, general, they call him the left hand. Go look him up. General Grob. And this man was laying waste to Ethiopia. I got into it with him. You know, Ashraf Kwesi had to get me off of one of them niggas over there. He was a Muslim trying to say that Islam came into Ethiopia peacefully. This, that man, listen here, I was chewing in his ass. I was getting it too. He, was, he couldn't deal with it. You know, because they try, they just like us. They trying to find a way for their oppressor. 
This is not one of the other churches. You understand what I'm saying? But they, the ones that I'm talking about, the first three, they further up and they they look like military forts. You, they even got bridges. They got bridges that you gotta walk before you can even get to it. See what I'm saying? So you can't. It's not easily to penetrate. You see. And so you look at the wideness at the bottom and how it gets skinny at the top. See, that's the same architectural style. See, they went to the same schools to get that knowledge. The only thing is that some areas have different resources. And so if you got some stone, you'll use stone. But in West Africa, where there's not a lot of granite, they just use dry mud. It's going to be there. And then, you you know, they over there tearing that up. They, they, they were talking about over in Mali. Okay, they were over in Mali where uh, they even destroying some of the ancient Timbuktu. They over there destroying it because niggas won't fight for nothing. The most holiest relics on the planet and them niggas over there tearing it up. They ain't got shit to do with Africa. All them crazy ass niggas need to get the hell out of Africa. We got all this beautiful monuments, and then just like that one low life that goddamn Arab over there in Afghanistan, the Taliban, they had their giant Buddha. I got the picture. They blew it up in the goddamn Arab right there next to the damn statues. Once it blew out, smile. See, smile. You, so they done blew a whole lot of our shit out of there. And just because you don't see it there don't mean it wasn't there. Okay? Let me keep it moving. Now you see how you got you got the column you got the colonnade you got these statues that lead all the way down to the temple you got this long and this is almost like the church like the it's oblong you ain't just walk up to the door you got to walk down what they call the nave you got to walk down to and this one road led down to the temple of, of Karnak this is the temple of Luxor so this is a mile and a half. And these formatics, which they call sphinxes, is that long. This was the longest, they said this was the most grand walkway in the ancient world. And when you come to Angkor Wat, it's aligned the same way. You go, let me go on this side. You see, right here, they got the sacred lake. Just like at Karnak, they got the sacred lake. You see right here, but these is Magog. Okay? Well, here they got the horn map. Okay? The horn map. This is Karnak. And here you see him holding the Nagar. This is divine in, 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 in Asia. It's not evil. This goddamn temple older than any goddamn thing the modern European ever created. Don't get to accept that fact. Let me come out of that. We got five minutes before we take a break. Another thing that you should recognize, this is an Egyptian priest. You can see right here where they got the bald head from the Egyptian priest. I'm going to keep showing you because all this shit is far beyond coincidental. This is an Egyptian priest. This is the Naga priest. Egyptian priest, Naga priest. See, the bald head, they shave their hair. Let me come out there. You're looking at some of the faces. Uh, automatically when you see it. You see the lips? You see that nose? Ain't no goddamn Asian got no face like that. Nowhere. None of them goddamn Chinese, you go get your, your Chinese choo choo choo, whatever you eat, and shit, and they don't look nothing like this. Okay? And I want y'all to look at these is the Naga. Now this Tarakula. And this is a Khmer, an Asian Kushite. Let me come out of this. Okay? Now, again, I want y'all to look, because I'm going to give y'all the URL. I just want y'all to stick to that woolly hair. I ain't even got the dates. These are 500, I got them on other uh, pictures, 500 B.C. Uh, this one about 300 B.C. Okay, now look at this. Look at this. This is Buddha. Now, I got the book. I wasn't able to get it all in. Now, the thing that even Eugene Adams, he, 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 he most definitely... Mark in his uh, DVD that Buddha was born from a Naga family. They are also human beings, okay? 
If you go do the research, they were Naga kings. These were real people. Now, this is the Koi South. See that peppercorn hair? See that slant eye? See? See? These are our people that went into Asia. This is where the Chinese come from. See these? These are some of our brothers and sisters that are there right now in the, in the South Pacific. Woolly hair. Not the straight hair one, but the woolly hair. These is from Chompa. Chompa. And I'm going to get off into that. Chom, which is calm, which is black. Okay? Let me know now. I'm going to keep going. Okay? Now, this is the Outer Mind Island. This is where the, this sister come from. Right there. And so, like I say, our family is all through here. But when the, when, when the, when the Europeans and the white Asians came on the scene, they pushed the majority of our people and killed them. His murder went on all through that area. And that's a, that's a knock coming out of Naga land. So I want y'all to see that. And this is, this is uh, 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 Aunt's woman. And this is uh, right here, the Isle of Mount Island. She's from there. So these ain't the straight, you know, the dark-skinned Indian types with the straight hair. These is full-blooded African people, OK? These are the original Nagas, OK? Y'all need to get that shit through y'all head. Just because you, you know, you, you looking through the little way. I'm going to take five minutes. Your brother want to take a break. That's cool. But you got to quit looking through the little lens. And the little lens is, you will see this and say, oh, no, nah, them niggas just taking nigga and trying to spice it up. It's before, nigga. Ain't no goddamn cracker on the planet. Listen, I'm going to end with this. I'm going to show you. I'm going to go straight to it. Do you know it's a tribe in Africa called Bozo? Bozo! Got them crapping, flew the damn clown to Africa and took pictures with him. And they looking at this goddamn cracker like he crazy. Now, what, the, what is that supposed to do? Give up their name? Because you looking through a little goddamn lens? And man, they, they come on and say, my name Bozo, brother. And you just bust out laughing at the man. Disrespect the man. See, looking through the little lens. So... That's, that's my message, family. As a researcher, just like I tell the brothers, you have to close your mouth. When you go around the world, because you're going to end up saying some shit to somebody, and they're going to do something to your ass. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. You're going to tell somebody, oh, your shit ain't nothing. Man, you, where you get that shit from? And they're going to pop you. <laughs> you know, open up your mind.